This is Dr. Mohammed Nouri with the course Introduction to Engineering Mechanics Trust Analysis. I have been teaching in the field of engineering mechanics for over 27 years. I decided to develop this module for trust analysis because the subject of trust analysis can be one of the most difficult topics covered in statics. In this module, what I have done, I have developed a step-by-step -step approach for using both method of joints and method of sections that you will find it very easy to follow and use. I hope you'll enjoy it. What are truss structures? Let's present an overview of these types of structures that are the first type of structures that we study in the course statics. Trusses are a very special or simple kind of structures or substructures that are used in buildings, bridges, and many other uh, types of structures. What does characterize a truss structure or you know, how do we basically differentiate between a truss and other types of structures? The main characteristics of a truss structure are as follows. First of all, trusses are made of slender members that are all pin connected to each other and they're only connected to each other at the ends. In other words, each member of a truss is connected to other members at the end of each member that are pin connected and therefore, if you recall from the definition of two force members, all members of a truss are two force members. That means the forces can act only along the line connecting the two ends and since the members of the truss are straight members so the forces act along the member of the truss. Also all external loads that act on the truss are assumed to be carried at the joints. Although this may sound physically of course not realistic, but that is the assumption we make, in even for instance the case that we have loads distributed over the truss, we basically uh, model these loads in such a way that they are acting only at the joints. The th third thing that you need to know about a truss is that trusses can be either a two 2D structures or a 3, 3D structures. Let's show you a few examples of typical truss structures. Trusses are very common in building uh, bridges. For instance, this building, as you can see, is made of uh, trusses or a long truss. And as you can see, all members are straight, connected at the two ends to each other. This is another type of a uh, truss structure again is a bridge with a very long span this is also another uh, bridge structure as I said it is very important to know that the connections which is at the ends of the members are such that the, the connection does not carry any significant internal moment there, that's why we assume they are pin connection let me show you a few more examples of typical trusses. For instance, this is a space truss, a building that all the external skeleton are made of these uh, truss structures. This is a power transmission uh, structure that is made of a sp a spatial trusses or 3D trusses. This is a structure that is a roof structure made of a truss. This is a pedestrian bridge made of a simple truss. These are 3D trusses that are most probably used for transmission towers or other application. This is a building. Again, you can see all these uh, different truss elements that basically are combined together and build the main a skeleton of this structure and this is a, a roof structure. 
What is the objective in trust analysis? The main objective in a trust, given that it only has nodal loads and all joints are pin connected are as follows. Let me first show you a physical model of a typical truss. This is a real physical uh, truss modeling and that's how we basically represent or demonstrate a truss structure. This is of course a 2D truss structure made of several elements. As you can see the supports are pin connection or pin connected to the structure and all members are only connected at the ends to each other and the loads act only at the joints. Okay. The main objective of a truss analysis is to find the forces in each member of the truss. For instance, in all of these members of this truss. There are two approaches for truss analysis depending on what the objectives are. Either we solve for all the force members, all the members in all four, all basically forces in all members. This is usually the case when you're designing a truss from scratch. For instance, you want to build a roof truss and you want to know how much force each member of this structure that you're planning to design will carry. This approach is called the method of joints. However, there are cases that you have an existing truss and for some reason, you, for instance, you are interested in finding forces in a few members. This is the case, for instance, that some of the members have deteriorated and you only want to replace those few members. You don't need to analyze the truss and find all member forces but you only are interested in those members that you want to replace. This approach is called the method of sections. In the following lectures I will be describing each of these two methods and then I will be presenting through some examples how we can use these two different techniques to solve for the member forces in each truss structure. Thank you.